Music is a language. Trying to play music without understanding the language of harmony is a little like having to be in a play in a language you don't speak. Even though it's certainly possible to memorize phrases phonetically, just like it's possible to learn to read notes on a page and use muscle memory to remember finger positions and patterns on your instrument, without understanding the underlying language, it can be a tedious, frustrating process. My name is Bill Graham. Welcome to an accelerated introduction to harmony for all musicians. The information we're going to go over in this series is important for all musicians to know about, no matter what instrument or style of music you play. So whether you're just getting started, or you've been playing for a while, maybe quite a while, but could use a little brush up on your fundamentals, I think you're going to find this series to be very helpful. We're going to begin our series by talking about the basic structural unit of melodies and chords, which are the intervals. An interval is just the distance between any two notes. So you could have a very close interval, like this, or a much wider interval, like this. If you play the two notes at the same time, it's called a harmonic interval. And if you play them one after another, it's called a melodic interval. So let's start with the smallest interval, and that's called a half step, or a minor second. So a minor second from C would be like going from C up to C sharp, or C down to B natural. The next interval is called a major second, and that's like two half steps put together. So again, from C, a major second up would be to D natural. A major second down from C is to B flat. The next interval we're going to look at is three half steps, and that's called a minor third. So a minor third up from C is E flat. A minor third down is A. Next interval we're going to look at is called the major third, and that's four half steps. So from C, a major third up is E, and a major third down is A flat. Next interval we're going to look at is called a perfect fourth, and that's five half steps. So let's start from a different note. If we start from G, a perfect fourth up is going to be to C. And a perfect fourth down is going to be to D. The next interval we're going to look at is six half steps wide, and it has a few different names that we need to learn. The first name is the tritone, because it's like taking three whole steps, one, two, three, and putting them together. Another name for it is the augmented fourth, because it's like taking a fourth, a perfect fourth, and stretching it out by a half step. The third name is the diminished fifth, which you get by starting with a perfect fifth, which we haven't learned about yet, and reducing that down by one half step. So a tritone up from G is a D flat, and a tritone down from G is also a D flat. It's the only interval that works that way. Next interval is the perfect fifth. And the perfect fifth is seven half steps wide. So a fifth up from G is D, and a fifth down from G is C. The next interval is eight half steps wide. Let's go somewhere else for that. How about B flat? So if we go up eight half steps from B flat, we get a note that's either F sharp or G flat. So if we spell it as F sharp, we're going to call it an augmented fifth. It's like taking a perfect fifth and raising it up a half step. If we spell it as G flat, it's going to be called a minor sixth. And then if we play that same interval down from B flat, we have D natural. Next up is the major sixth, which is nine half steps wide. 
You could also think of this as being an octave minus a minor third. And another name for this interval is the diminished seventh, depending on how it's spelled. If we go down a major sixth from B-flat, we have a D-flat. Next up, we have a minor seventh, which is up ten half steps, or up an octave and minus two. And, and down a minor seventh from B-flat is a C. Next interval is called a major seventh. And a major seventh is like an octave minus a half step. So a major seventh up from B-flat is an A. And a major seventh down from B-flat is a B-natural. Last up, we've got the perfect octave. And the perfect octave is 12 half steps. It's just to the next iteration of the same note you're already on. Okay, great. So now that you can play all of your intervals, spend some time drilling random intervals up and down from random notes. So, what's a minor third up from G? What's a major sixth down from A? What's a minor second up from D flat? What's a major third down from B flat? Etc. Just spend some time on that until you can do it without really having to think about it. The next thing we're going to talk about is even more important than just being able to execute these intervals on your instrument. What we're going to talk about now is knowing what these intervals sound like in your head before you play them. The reason this is so important is because it allows you to accurately translate what you're hearing in your head into notes to play on your instrument. This lets you play intentionally instead of just letting your fingers wander randomly up and down your instrument or use music theory knowledge to fill in the gaps and play something that you know will work but you didn't really hear. The best way to work on this, even if you're not a singer, is to learn to sing all 12 intervals up and down. Let's work on that a little bit right now. Okay, so using the piano to help us out at first, let's sing up and down a minor second from B flat. Here's a pitch. So here we go. Uh, and now up and down a major second. Uh, now a minor third. Uh, a major third. perfect fourth, a tritone, perfect fifth, minor sixth, Major sixth, minor seventh, major seventh, and finally an octave. And then now let's sing down those intervals from B flat, starting with a minor second. A major second. Minor third. Major third. Perfect fourth, a tritone, perfect fifth, 
perfect fifth. Minor sixth. Major sixth. Minor seventh. A major seventh. And finally, an octave. Let's try holding a note on the piano and singing a predetermined interval above it. You can use the piano to check your accuracy. Let's sing a fifth above this G. Let's try another one. How about another one? Now sing a fifth below the piano. How about some major thirds? How about a major third below the piano? some minor sevenths. A minor seventh below the piano. Practicing and getting comfortable with this on every interval is going to go a long way towards helping develop your ear. One last thing I wanted to address today about intervals is what happens when you invert them or flip them over. So if you play a minor second above an A, that's a B flat. But if we flip this upside down, so now instead of the A on the bottom and the B flat on the top, we have a B flat on the bottom and an A on the top, that minor second inverts to a major seventh. If we had a major second, A to B natural, that's going to invert to a minor seventh. A minor third inverts to a major sixth. A major third inverts to a minor sixth. A perfect fourth inverts to a perfect fifth. A tritone inverts to a tritone. A perfect fifth inverts to a perfect fourth. A minor sixth inverts to a major third. A major sixth inverts to a minor third. A minor seventh inverts to a major second. And a major seventh inverts to a minor second. So remember that seconds invert to sevenths, thirds invert to sixths, and fourths invert to fifths. Minor intervals invert to major intervals, and perfect intervals invert to perfect intervals.
Also on the tritone, we could have said that that was an augmented fourth inverting to a diminished fifth. So augmented intervals invert to diminished intervals. That's about it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Next time on Accelerated Introduction to Harmony, we're going to be talking about the circle of fifths and major scales. Until next time, take it easy.